guys. Anybody ready for a good morning? I, I have one thing to say before I start. I'm not here for just a good meeting. I'm here for an encounter with God this morning. We're not living in mediocrity. We, we are just going to go for it this morning. If anybody is with me, I want you just to raise your hand. <laughs> Come on, who's on this ship? <laughs> We're going somewhere, we're going somewhere, we're going somewhere. We're honored to be here with you guys. We are honored to be here with you guys. We're honored to be here in Canada. As I shared on Friday night, this is my first time to Canada, um, which is amazing. Not my last. That's a good, that's a good prophetic word. <laughs> Declaration. <sighs> yeah, we're, we've just been enjoying, enjoying our time here. We've been really just catching a heart for Canada. I know I have, and I can feel it from my team. Um, just really ca- catching a heart for what, what God's doing here, and just for the partnership um, with our countries. And I'm just excited. Like God is just moving so powerfully in this day, and we get to be a part of it. He has chosen us. He has chosen you. He has chosen me. We just get to, we just get to dig in deep. And, and I believe there is an opportunity this morning to step into more, to step past the place of where we are comfortable right now. I just believe God's saying, like, it's, it's not time to be comfortable. It is not time to be comfortable. That There are people that need the love of Jesus all around you. You know, for... For so long, like we've we've been praying for revival, we've seen revivals, we we've experienced revival, we've experienced the touch of God, we've experienced His presence. But I'm telling you that revival is not just an event. We are actually learning to become revival. Oh man, I'm telling you, this is it. Like, I love revival. It's, it's changed my life. I love the outpouring of God's presence. I love the miracles. I love everything that comes with it. But I'm telling you, he's called us to become revival. He's called us to invade this country. He's called us to invade this planet. You are the answer because the answer is living inside of you. For, for so long, we've, we've prayed for something, we've, 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 we've prophesied about things, but I believe God is calling us to be the answer to the prophetic words that we've been prophesying, that we would be the answer to the prayers that we are praying. If we would just take what we have, what God has given us, we would steward so much of the New Testament as you read through and, and Jesus speaking in parables, so much of what he talked about was actually stewardship. Stewardship of what you've been given. And the way that people steward things is how they receive more. Who wants more? I mean, who really wants more? <laughs> Come on, this is, this, is not a, this is not a morning to be like, thank you, Jesus, let's, let's pray, let's do our offering, let's worship, and let's go home. This is, I, I just believe this is a morning to encounter God. And, and that, man, that God... It's not that he's, that he's not with us sometimes or that he's here. It's, it's that our perspective and that the way we think, the way that we've, 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 we've positioned our minds, and I, and I believe God is, is renewing our minds. And as we renew our minds to the truth that he is actually present and he's here right now with us, that he's actually present and he's with us as we go home, that he's present and that he's with us when we're at our job, that he can be just as much with us in revival in our car as we're passing through the drive-thru at Tim Hortons getting some coffee. <laughs> amen, Jesus. Everybody loves coffee, just say amen. <laughs> but that he can literally be there just as powerfully as he is here this morning. I'm telling you, we are becoming revival. Become the revival that you want to see. <laughs> We did it yesterday. We did it yesterday. <laughs> we went out and we just loved on people. Some of you guys are like, oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I have what it takes to see all the crazy stuff and hear you know, the crazy stories I hear. I'm telling you, 
we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I'll just give you a little <laughs> look into my life. I've seen God do a lot, but I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I just know someone who's really good at it. And I've, become, I've learned to become friends with him. I don't know how to make revival happen in a Hindu temple, but he does. And when he shows up, good things happen. Kids get saved. People give their hearts to Jesus. Bodies are healed. Are you with me? <laughs> oh, man, I just love Jesus. I'm just believing for more this morning. If you're believing for more this morning, just say amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my best friend. He is the reason that I live and that I breathe. He's the reason I do ministry. I don't do ministry to build up anything earthly for myself. I don't care if anybody ever knows about me or who I am. I just care that they meet the one who's the most incredible, loving, best friend that you could ever have. That's the reason I travel. That's the reason that I release the words that God has given me because it's all about him. And I'm telling you, you have, you have it. You have what it takes. You have it because Jesus is living inside of you. That it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah, that in Matthew, Matthew 6, verse 10, the Lord's prayer is that, that we pray, Our Father who is in heaven, our Father. I love that it's about, it starts as a family. You know, we are a family. And I love, just as you were saying, you, you have family here in Canada. Before we even got here, we have family. I, I considered just even saying that as I was crossing the border. Because when I go places, there's some countries actually we go that you can't tell them that you're preaching the gospel. That you, Literally, you won't get into the country if you tell them you're preaching the gospel. And, and, uh, but, I, you know, I realize I'm like, you know, if I tell them that I'm going to see family, that I'm spending time with, that is the honest truth. Because that is actually my higher priority than me just doing ministry is actually becoming family with people. <laughs> our father who's in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven oh man we 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 get the opportunity to to not only go to heaven when we die but we actually get the opportunity to help bring heaven to earth right now <laughs> that is just amazing it's like a win-win situation <laughs> Never heard of a better win-win situation that not only when we die do we get to spend eternity with our loving Father, that we get to spend eternity with each other, that we get to spend eternity in glory, but that actually we get an opportunity. How much can we experience here right now on earth? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. There is so much more. And we can't be satisfied we can't be satisfied with yesterday's bread, with yesterday's manner, what we saw 10 years ago in a revival. Like, we need to have our own personal revival today. That it's a daily encounter with Him. Because when you're, when you're in, your, in His presence, you're, you're with Him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, man, don't get me going. I am just, I'm just feeling it this morning. <laughs> It could be, I, I, was, I was in uh, Columbia last Sunday preaching in a church, and I think I was the most fiery I think I have ever preached in my whole life. I, I, I mean, honestly, for those of you guys that know me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit quieter. I'm not, like, super shy. I'm not super outgoing. Um, but I, I just like to just, you know, I, I believe that, you know, we, you just be who you are. Like, let God flow through who you are. But, but sometimes he'll just put something on you, and it's like, and I'm feeling that this morning. Shake us up, Jesus. Shake me up. I want to walk out of this room changed this morning. I don't want to ever be the same. And I feel God just, just releasing that over me just through worship, through this time. As you were sharing, Pastor Brett, like, I just feel God stirring something up in, in my heart. I love getting to be a part of just services and revival. I'm like, man, because I get changed. <laughs> I can't be content with where I'm at. I've got to be going forward. I've got to be moving forward. I've got to be moving into deeper places in God's presence and in His goodness. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm just going to ask you to all partner in prayer that I would just get wrecked this morning. <laughs> 
Just don't pray too hard because then I might not be able to preach. <laughs> I'll be on the ground, but that's good too. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go somewhere where there's just a good message. I want to go somewhere where God shows up. And we, we, we saw God show up on Friday night. God did miracles. God released healings. Is there anybody in the room that was touched by God on Friday night? Come on, Jesus. I remember you got touched by God. 15 years of an ankle problem. God touched you Friday night. Come on. <laughs> That's amazing. I believe he's going to do more this morning. And I, I, I want to, I just want to share... But I, what, I want, what I want us to do is, is not to disconnect, but to connect to the presence and the reality of God's tangible presence that's in the room this morning. I mean, it is, He is here. He is here. But I feel like there's going to be a, just a, a greater deposit. And, and I really believe that, that as He's calling us to step into this thing, that to take a step, to take a step past where we're comfortable that there's actually going to be a deposit and a release and an impartation grace to actually walk in and carry His presence on a daily basis. That not just while we're in church, but it's there, but also as we're walking throughout our days, that we're actually doing life with God. Not just an idea of God, not just a good Bible study, but that we're actually doing life with God. That we're actually carrying His presence and the presence of God just wrecked, wrecked me and changed my life seven years ago. You know, I've actually been a Christian my entire life, 32 years old. I just turned this last week. Hallelujah, Jesus. I like 32, year, 32 years young. Most people think I'm like 25, so <laughs> I receive it. When people start guessing my real age, I might be sad. <laughs> but I've actually been a Christian my whole life. Um, I grew up in an amazing family. Um, I've heard God's voice. I've, 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 you know, I've heard Him speak. I've, I've felt His love. I've known Him, but I never knew what was possible until seven years ago. That the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on your life was not a one-time event where you speak in tongues, and then you go back to normal life. I didn't realize that the the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your life was actually supposed to mark you and change you, so that you would never be the same. And that, so that you would actually be aware of his tangible reality 24 hours a day as you go about and do life. There you go. I'm telling you, before seven years ago, I had never seen anybody saved, healed, delivered, none of that. After, after I got marked with his presence, I've seen literally thousands of people saved, healed, and delivered. I've seen people radically get touched in Hindu temples. I've seen people in the upper room in Jerusalem have 45-minute hour breakouts of miracles and people saying, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> I'm telling you, on my own, I have no idea how to make that happen. But by His presence, by His goodness, by His display of His wonder, wonderful power and glory, anything is possible. And I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm not... I, I just want like you guys to feel our heart. Like we don't we don't come as like Bethel. Like hey, we're like some experts, or we just we have it all. We're like the more I learn, the more I realize I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea, <laughs> and I think we need to stay in that place of childlikeness, knowing we don't have all of it together. We don't understand everything, and the more that we can come to the thing of God, I am hungry. The more I know, the more I realize I don't know. But the, the hungrier it gets, it gets me. <sighs> it's, it's amazing in the kingdom that the more you eat, the more you get hungry. <laughs> as, as Brent was saying, like he's been sharing with us, just that, that things of the, the world and things of the kingdom are different. And sometimes we, we like to use the ways of thinking of this world, and we try to put that on the ways of the kingdom, but I'm telling you, it doesn't work like that. Romans 12, 2 says, to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you can what? So that you can prove the will of God. What is the will of God? On earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. Thank you, Jesus. I got radically touched by God's presence, and I've never been the same. You know, you can, you can see things out of the principles 
of the kingdom. You can see things out of the authority that Jesus has given you. And there's times where we, we need to operate in that. When you don't feel something, you just have to know, like, no, this is, this is the will of God. This is what Jesus said. This is the truth. And I'm going to stand on the truth regardless of what I feel or I don't feel. You said it this morning. It's, we, don't, we can't just live on what we feel. We have to live on the truth of what he said. We have to live on the truth of what he said. I love Psalms 103, 2, and 2 through 3. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals you of all your diseases. You just can't forget these things. <laughs> you cannot forget these things. But even more than walking by the principles, I want to walk in his presence, that, that literally every step I take, that he is there, that I hear his voice, I, I feel his guidance, I know where he's moving and where he's going, that's where I desire to be, in his glory, in the cloud of glory, because that's when you see the most amazing things happen. We got to We've been doing ministry in uh, Nebraska for, for years. We've been taking teams in there, and we've seen just amazing regional transformation um, like I've never experienced before. And uh, it's just been, just been a privilege to get to, to be going in there. And uh, we, we heard a prophetic word. We heard a prophetic word. A uh, pastor come to us, and he said, a prophet came through here, and he said, he pointed out a hospital. He said, that hospital was designed so that it could be emptied out. And we're like... That's a good word. But, but, not, but, but oftentimes we're like, oh, we hear the words and we're like, ah, oh, that would be amazing one day. But the way we think is that, hey, I want to be the answer to the prophetic word that was just given, that was just prayed. So we, we, we were in the middle of a conference. We just packed up a bus. We, we were on a break. We didn't really have much time to do it. But we said, is there any way we can just make time for this and just go over to the hospital right now? And so we packed up about 15 of us. We head over to this hospital. We, uh, we start heading in there. We partner up, and we just, we're, you know, we're looking for people to pray. We're, we're imagining, you know, just people just getting healed and grows and just leaving the hospital. And how, how many of you guys know sometimes God doesn't do things always the way you expect it? <laughs> Actually, most of the time, people ask me, they're like, how do you, like, how do you end up seeing, like, all these people healed and saved in the upper room in Jerusalem. How do you, how do you see these things? I have no idea. He's the one. <laughs> you, can't, you can't try to make something happen. You just follow what he's doing, and you're going to see amazing breakthrough. I mean, in healing, I, I always follow what God is doing in the moment. Sometimes people are like, well, what about the person with cancer in the back? You know, why are you praying for the person with the foot problem? I don't know, but God showed me that right now. And if I follow his presence, if I follow what he's doing right now, if I, if I, am, if I give thanks for what he's doing for this foot, more is going to be released. That cancer, that tumorous thing, that's going to just disappear in God's presence. But if we're not willing to get excited for what he's doing, if we're not willing to get excited and to celebrate the little things that we're seeing, are we going to be willing to, to celebrate when he does these big things? Are we going to be able to steward and carry what he's given us? Oh, man. Are you guys alive? <laughs> we head into this hospital. We start to pray. We, we, can't, we don't actually find very many people to pray for. It was, it was actually strange. People were in surgeries. People were in different rooms where we couldn't go to. Um, I think there was only actually a couple people that actually got to lay hands and pray for an individual in the hospital. But what we did do is, is we, we recognized that as everywhere we go, everywhere that our feet go, that he comes with us. And when we recognize that, we can release that. You're going to release what you're aware of. And so as we went through that hospital, we just became aware of the presence of God that is with us, that transforms lives, that clears out hospitals. And, and we just prayed through there. We just thank God for his goodness. And we just went through that hospital. We spent maybe 30 minutes there. We came back out. We got on the bus. And, you know, like, we, we, were, we were happy. We were probably not as excited that we didn't see, like, this crazy blow-up thing happen and people just leaving the hospitals and saying, what must I do to be saved? And, you know, because that's what we expect. 
But how many of you guys know, like, sometimes we just need to be thankful for what we're seeing right now in front of us, regardless. And so we just stayed in thanksgiving. We stayed connected to faith that we're there. God's doing something. And so uh, about two days later, we heard that 50% of the hospital just up, checked out, and went home. (laughs) 50% of the hospital checked out, up, and went home. There was a lady from the church that actually worked in admissions. So this is how we, we started gathering this information Within four days, 80% of the hospital was checked out and went home. And it stayed this way for over nine months. It was at a 20% capacity of what it normally would be. And, and literally, the unsaved, one of the unsaved uh, ladies that helps oversee the whole hospital, she said, it's as if everyone just got healed and went home. <laughs> oh, how right you are. <laughs> Oh, how right you are. And, you know, uh, one amazing thing about this, if you, if you actually step back and look at it, is that not only did people get healed, but it actually means that something regionally was happening that people actually weren't getting sick. Because normally in like the cardiology center, they would have somewhere between six to eight people coming in a day, and they were having like zero. And they were actually sending doctors home because... Um, because they just didn't have anything to do. But they would keep a person on just in case somebody came. I mean, literally, this is how crazy it started getting. And, and so, so nine, nine months goes by, and then the numbers start to creep back up, like almost back up to where they were before. And we, we kind of heard about this, and we're like, oh, that's just not okay. Like, you, you, can, you, can, uh, yeah, you can not be content with the stuff that's not of the kingdom. And we're like, oh, that's, that's not Matthew 6, verse 10. I know what it is. And so we were actually heading back out there with the team again, and we were just praying into, like, God, we just we want to see that. We want to see that happen again. We want to see it just stay. And uh, we're thankful for what you're doing, but we want to see more. And literally the day that we flew into Nebraska, the moment the plan landed that day before we ever, we actually didn't even go to the hospital. The day that we landed, it dropped all the way back down. And it stayed at a 20% capacity for the last two years. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, that is crazy. I, mean, I was there. <laughs> Literally, it, it, it's, it stayed, it's 80% cleared out. Literally, they've shut down full wings of the hospital. Um, I mean, and now this is, this is a problem, but this is a good problem. I mean, if you follow, I mean, and some of you guys are just even thinking of this. Well, what happens with the people that work there? Literally, we, they've, they've had 167 people that have actually had to be laid off because so many people have been healed and so many people are just not getting sick anymore. But, and, th- and this is what I've, what I've thought about, like, we need to just... We need to have a greater vision for what it's going to look like when the kingdom really invades. There you go. There you go. We, we need to have jobs for these people when the kingdom really invades. Like when hospitals are, are only there if like someone gets in some crazy accident and revivalists aren't there to come and uh, raise them from the dead or to, you know, to stitch them up, that we're going we're gonna to have doctors to do that. But, but, you know, we're not going to have places where people are just sick all the time. And so actually believing in a greater vision, like what is it going to look like when all of Canada is saved? Like, and beginning to dream in that, because if we're not willing to dream in that now, I I don't believe we're ever going to see it. Like you've got to see it before. And I believe God's putting vision in our eyes. We've got to look further than what we're looking at now. We've got to have a greater vision. Like that's crazy. A hospital being cleared out, 167 people getting laid off because God invaded a city so much. And so, and so I just believe, and even now, we're, it's like we're dreaming into like, man, what can we do? How can we, because we want economies to prosper. We want all that to happen. I mean, it's a good problem. <laughs> but it was just interesting, like, as leadership, we were just like, kind of like working through this, like, wow, this is crazy. Like, we never thought we'd be dealing with this problem of like, man, there's all these people laid off now. We need, we need to find them jobs. 
But I mean, I'm, I'm believing, and I'm already envisioning, hey, what am I going to do? Because as, as a minister in traveling, I, my heart is to really equip people to see them walk in the presence of God, to see them equipped in healing and supernatural and words of knowledge. But I'm, I'm looking like, hey, what's it going to look like? What am I going to do when everybody's equipped, when all churches are equipped, when everybody's flowing in this stuff that, that they don't have to come to church to, for somebody to get healed? Like, what's it going to look like? I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I think I've got a feature in music. <laughs> I've always loved music. A friend and I, we're like, we're, we're going to have our own band. We're going to play music. We're going to see people just get touched by God through music. I mean, that's what I'm planning for. I'm not planning for like 20 years. I'm like, hey, what about like five, 10 years? I believe it is possible. I mean, you look at the, the, uh, the Welsh revival. You look at some of these nations just radically touched by God. But I'm telling you, the answer is right, is right in front of you. It's, we're learning how to become revival now. We're learning that revival is with us because revival, to me, oftentimes we look at revival and we, we say, you know, what is revival? And we think, of, we think of healings, we think of salvations, we think of gold dust gems, all these things. But in my perspective, those are just byproducts of revival. Like those things come with revival, but revival to me really is His manifest presence being made known on this earth. And that those things just happen. That the signs follow us because He's with us. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> oh, man, just, just hearing you worship today just bless me. I, I, I love the verse that says, Restore to me the joy of my salvation. I believe we need to live in that place every single day. That we live, we live in this place of, of, of realizing the salvation that we have and that we carry, that he is with us. And that we live in that joy. I love Acts 3, verse, verse 19 says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you, this is not like a one-time, like, hey, like we do this, we repent. No, we, we are continually changing the way we think. Because as we are conformed into His likeness, as we behold His glory, we're actually being transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that we're actually continually being refreshed. That we are continually being refreshed in His presence. That we are continually having times of refreshing come. I love Acts 2 verse 38 says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's, he kind of hits two different things, almost says the exact same thing, except for, he says, Receive the gift of of the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is the gift. Like He is our gift. He is our joy. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Are you getting hungry yet? We need to stay continually hungry. We need to stay continually in a place where we are grateful for what we've seen. We're grateful for what we've experienced, but we are hungry for more. We are not satisfied with less, but we are hungry for more. God, what does it look like for all of Langley? What does it look like for all of BC to be filled with the glory? I, I, I love, you know, oftentimes we talk about that the glory of the earth shall cover the the waters is the, no. <laughs> but that actually, it's the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. <laughs> sometimes we're waiting for something to come, but He's already come. And that by the transformation and the renewing of our minds, we actually wake up to the reality that He's here. That He's here, that He's here, that He's here. And I'm telling you, it touched me seven years ago, and I've never been the same. That literally, I, I got touched by God in His presence. His power has filled me. I felt, I felt His tangible presence and power and love flow through my body. And I'm telling you, it hasn't stopped. It has not stopped. And it doesn't need to stop. <laughs> we need to know God's love. We need, to, we need to yada God's love. We need to know by experience, by encounter. 
to not just have an intellectual knowledge, but have an actual everyday encounter with God. Because it's what changes us and it's what changes the world around us. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We just thank you for grace. God, we thank you for your grace and your power, God. We thank you for your goodness. Yeah, we thank you for your tangible nature in this place. I just want to I just want to tell you like when you get so covered in God's presence, things just begin to happen all around you. Like fish, I, I like to say it this way, the fish just begin to jump into the boat. <laughs> the people they get in the way of you. <laughs> and then they get in the way of God, and then God gets them. <laughs> Oh man, I, I, a while back, I was, uh, I was expecting, it was my fiance at the time, my wife now, I was expecting her to come over to the house, um, she was supposed to come over about 12, but I heard, I heard a, a doorbell ring at about 11 o'clock, and I said, oh, that's, that's strange, um, she's here early. Well, I go out to the door, and it's, it's not my wife, it's a, it's a much older gentleman, and he's standing at my door, and I'm like, oh, this is odd. I've never seen you before in my life. What's, you know, what's going on? And I live at a, on a dead-end street um, back in, you know, in these trees, and it's, it's nowhere near, like, you would just be wandering around. And, and this guy said, hey, excuse me, is this 1020-something uh, East Street? And he's talking really kind of slow and drawn out. And, and I said, no, no. He said, I'm looking for the, the, the place that sells back braces. Do you, do you know? <laughs> I'm looking for this place that sells back braces. <laughs> and I'm just looking, I'm like, oh, God has just set you up. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just like, to me, it was like comical. I'm like, because he was talking very slow, and I'm just like, oh, you have no idea. And literally, I'm on a dead-end street. I'm in nowhere near any sort of, like, business area. I mean, we're very residential. Like, you literally have to, like, pull the bushes back to get up to my doorstep. And I'm like, how did you end up on my doorstep? <laughs> and so he starts talking, and I said, hey, like, well, that's, I'm actually not the guy that sells back braces, but, but, <laughs> I said, We've been seeing God do amazing, amazing things. And I, and, and I just shared a, a testimony of a, a recent miracle I had seen him do. And, and I, said, I said, and he said, it's, it's actually for my wife, and she's in the car. And then he said, well, would you like to come pray for my wife? Like, he just kind of invites me out to the car. I'm like, I, I would love to come pray for your wife. I believe God's going to do something. And so he brings me out to the car. And it's so funny, as soon as we walked up the car, um, the lady was like, oh, finally, we found you. We've been, we've been looking for this place all, all morning long. We can't find this place. And she's going on and on and on and on. And me and her husband are kind of like, okay, stop, stop, stop. And she's like, honey, honey, th this actually isn't the guy that sells back braces, but he wants to pray for you right now. And she's kind of like, oh, bless his heart. That's amazing. And I, don't, I don't think she was expecting what she was about to get. <laughs> Because it was kind of, I was like, oh, token, like, oh, that, hallelujah, praise Jesus, that's good. And, and uh, so I grab her hand, and I start to pray, and I prayed a really long, hard prayer. It was about 15 seconds long. <laughs> I said, Holy Spirit, come, do what you're good at doing. <laughs> and uh, she, <laughs> oh, wow, Holy, I love how the Holy Spirit just honors, he, he's, he's the most honoring person. And you just say, Holy Spirit, come. I, I just said it. I was sharing that testament. I just felt him come just even stronger. Whew, Holy Spirit, come. And he, and he came, and she looked at me. She said, I felt your prayer. I felt your prayer. And I said, I want you just come down here and just see what you notice God's done already. And she, she gets down out of the car, and I notice that she leaves her cane in the car. <laughs> and she gets down out of the car, and she starts walking and she starts looking, and her eyes start getting big, and then she starts bending over. She said, I couldn't do that before. I couldn't do that before. Radically touched by God. I'm telling you, God wants to make it easy. He wants, the fish are going to just start jumping in the boat. When we learn how to carry his presence, that the tangible reality of God, the fish just start jumping in the boat.
because I'm telling you, you carry him. You carry him, and, but you're going to release what you're aware of. And when we become aware of him, we release him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. When we, when we were aware of him going into the hospital, we released him. And now there's a hospital <laughs> that's nearly empty with multiple wings shut down in it. That's just crazy. What if, what if that happened here? I believe it can. I'm telling you, that wasn't in like Africa I was telling you about or Mexico or the stuff that it's like, oh, yeah, God does that stuff, but always, it's always somewhere else. It's always in somebody else's city. I'm telling you, how about right here? Who's hungry for it? Who's hungry for it? God wants to fill the hungry. He wants to take us out of our complacency. He wants to take us out of that place that we're, we're you know, just satisfied with, with what he's given us. We're satisfied with yesterday's manna. I'm telling you, I'm not satisfied with that. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want to see every person that comes to me receive healing. I want to see every person that comes to me healed. Because when every person that came to Jesus, they got healed. And I'm not, I'm not satisfied until I see that happen. I'm completely grateful for what I'm seeing, but I'm not satisfied until every person does. But I believe he's not just raising up one or two of us. He's raising up a generation that we could all see God's power flow in and through us in such a dynamic way that people say, what must I do to be saved? Start with me, God. Is anybody else there? <laughs> Is anybody else hungry? <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I just invite you to come right now. I just invite you to come right now. Holy Spirit, just come right now. Just come right now. I believe right, right now in this, in this morning, he's actually um, just releasing. There, there's a renewing of the mind. There's actually there's such a strong spirit of revelation in this church. There's such a strong revelation, a spirit of revelation in this church, and he's doing something right now. He's releasing revelations to hearts. Revelations to hearts. Yeah, and just stirring something up in the spirit, even right now. Yeah, if you're hungry for more, I'm just going to even invite you to stand right now. Just going to invite you to stand right now. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm going to invite you, not in a religious way, but in a way that you are hungry for more of him. In a, in, a, in a place in your heart is like, God, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care what anybody else thinks. But I want more of you, and I'm, I'm just desperate for more. I'm thankful for what you're doing, but I am not content with less. I want more. Oh, Jesus is doing something in hearts this morning. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I just, there's just this, this power has just come on my heart. He's doing something. There's, there is something radical happening. Just, just put your hands out. Just begin to receive what God is doing because it's not by what we've done or what we could do on our own. It's by everything that Jesus has done. It's by everything that He has done. And so right now, Holy Spirit, I'm just asking that you would release grace right now over every single person in this room. Yeah, that there'd be just a, a Hebrews 5.14 anointing that you would actually train their senses to know you, God. To know you, to know the living God of the universe. That everywhere that they go, that they would carry such a revelation of the heart of God, the love of God, that they would carry that with them everywhere that they go. And so I'm just asking right now that your presence would just rest upon individuals in this room. Yeah, just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him for what you're, what you're feeling. Begin to thank him for what he's doing in your heart even right now. Because thankfulness brings increase. So just even out loud, just right now, just begin to thank him for what he's doing. I just invite you into that place of just, yeah, Father, we just thank you. You're, you're just good. You're good and your love endures forever, God. Just mark us this morning. Mark us this morning. God, let us not be the same. Yeah, just tell him, just, just say, God, let us not be the same. Let us not be the same. Holy Spirit, just come right now. Just come right now. You guys just actually go start praying for people. Then my team's going to just come. They're going to start praying over people. But Holy Spirit, we just release your grace into this room right now. We just re release grace right now. 
over people in this room right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just released the fire of God. He's breaking off fear this morning. There's people that have been living in fear, that you've been bound by fear, and God is breaking it with His perfect love that casts out all fear. God, we just thank you for that right now. Yeah, just even if, if that's you, just, just put your hands, just extend your hands up and just release it to Him. Nobody's looking. Just, just release it to Him right now. Just release it to Him right now. Release it to Him right now. You're walking in freedom. Christ came that we could be free. <laughs> Holy Spirit, come right now. 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 He's renewing a new... There's a newness of life. There's a newness of life that's resting on people in this room. A newness of life. Just stirring up old, old passions and desires, things that, that have gone unfulfilled yet, prophetic words that have been prayed that you're saying, I've waited 20 years for this. I believe God is just actually releasing um, just faith into your heart again. Faith into your heart again for the prayer that you no longer pray. Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, just come right now. Yeah, God's touching someone right now on the left-hand side of their stomach. You've had something going on there on your left-hand side of your stomach. He's releasing healing grace over that right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, there's someone you felt like there's just something been wrapped around your head. And it's actually manifesting physically. Wow, just, just prophetically, just, just take that thing off right now. Take that thing off. Take that toque off. <laughs> just release that right now. Grace. Grace, grace, grace of heaven. Grace of heaven. Grace of heaven. Yeah, God's healing a bladder. You've had like recurring bladder condition, um, bladder problems, infections. God's doing something in there right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, there's someone you is like a skin cancer or something like that that keeps coming back or there's been some problem there. God's really healing grace over that. And there's someone else, I think it may be even on your left hand um, that it's been, it's been happening. Thank you, Jesus. There's someone with an esophageal problem, something with the esophagus. I don't know. There may be acid reflux issues, but I felt something real specifically in the esophagus. God touching that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Just come now even more. Just come now even more. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Even you guys are so filled with his presence and his goodness. Just Wow, just put your hand on somebody next to you. Yeah, just, just put your hand on somebody next to you and just release what God is pouring out over you, over them. If you're able to, Father, we just thank you for grace right now. He's doing something in somebody's left wrist. Uh, left wrist, I can feel it. I don't know if you were here Friday and you didn't receive it, but there's someone that you need a miracle there and God's doing it. He cares, he cares, he cares. He cares, he cares, he cares. There's someone, I saw like a tube or something going into your right ear, something with the right ear, like a tube going in there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for grace and power, Father, in Jesus' name. There's someone, uh, something going on with your left calf. I don't know exactly what it is. I just saw, felt something happening in the left calf that God's doing a restorative work. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. I felt too as well that there's people that had like things that were missing in their body that need to be restored. Things that are missing that need to be restored. Yeah, if that's you, just, uh, wow, put your hands out in front of you and just begin to receive that right now. Yeah, God's also doing a work in the in, in backs all over the room. I can feel stuff even from like the, the, the lower part of the neck into the, into the back, into your upper, upper part of your back. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. God, thank you for doing restorative miracles. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Show us your glory. Yeah, just allow him to come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's doing something in uh, someone's left knee as well. I can, and I felt something happening in my right ear. Physically can feel these things going on right now. Thank you, Jesus. We just release the fire of heaven right now over you in Jesus' name. We just release the fire and the grace of heaven right now over you guys in Jesus' mighty name. Power in Jesus' mighty name. Power in Jesus' mighty name. Fire in Jesus. 
Wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you for grace. 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 We just release it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for grace happening right now in Jesus' mighty name. Fire right now in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, someone is between your shoulder blades, upper part of your back right now, being healed right now. Someone with tendons in there, your right knee. It's kind of back behind the right part of your knee. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do... <laughs> Oh, Jesus, thank you. God, you're good. Just tell him. Just tell him. Just tell him. Just tell him. Mm, thank you, Father. If any of those things that I just called out are for you or, yeah, I want you just to put your hand up just real quick. We're just going to pray, actually. I just feel that we're just going to pray right now over any of those things I just called out in the room. Just put a hand up just real quick, and we're, gonna just, we're just going to pray real quick. Yeah, just actually go ahead and stand up if that was you. Any of those things that were just called out, put your hand up, and we're going to have people partner around you right now in prayer. Yeah, there's, there's someone as well. Stand up with the right wrist issue, the right wrist issue. Stand up right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The pancreas, I keep hearing pancreas. Thank you, God. Yeah, and just partner around those people right now. Yeah, if, you're, if you don't have your hand up, and if there's someone, you're like, hey, you didn't call it out, but I want a miracle this morning. I'm telling you, Psalms 103, forget not all his benefits. He heals all your diseases. He heals all your diseases. So right now, Father, we just speak to conditions in the room that have just gone on for way too long. And we just say, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Get your full reward right now, Jesus. Right now, we just speak to pain. We, we command it to leave right now. Someone's right elbow is being touched in the room. I can feel it real strong. The right elbow is being touched right now in the room. also saw like nodules and, and those types of things like just disappearing. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you for your grace and your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your goodness, God. Come, Holy Spirit. Yeah, just press in a little longer. Just thank Him. Those of you guys that aren't praying for someone, just yeah, just press into the, the presence. There's a, there's a place of pressing that's not out of works. It's actually out of a hunger. It's actually out of a healthy hunger. It says, God, I want more of you. Realizing that you can't do anything to earn it, but you can position yourself to receive more. So, Father, we just thank you for grace. We just thank you for grace and mercy. Oh, I also saw issues with the brain, like just different things with the brain and the neurons in the brain, and God doing something there as well. I actually felt this tingling start to go through part of my head. God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you that, that, that Jesus is here laying hands on people. <laughs> That Jesus is laying hands on people. Yeah, we just bless the kids downstairs right below this as well, Father. Whatever you're doing down up here, just get them right now where they're at. <clears throat> Thanks, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, if... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, if you've been receiving prayer, go ahead and check your body out. If you came in with something, you actually didn't even receive prayer in this moment, just check your body out anyways. Just see, check to see what God has already done in this moment. Yeah, and if you're, if you're, when you're noticing something different that's changed, I want you just, just to wave at me just to, so we can see and just celebrate just the things that God's already doing in the room. Yeah, right back here. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for more, more, more. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, just continue to check your body. Miracles don't usually happen when we pray. They actually usually happen when you check. Just a good key to seeing more healing. <laughs> thank you, Father. So we just thank you for grace and mercy. Yeah, we thank you for tumors being dissolved right now in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for hearts being healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. 
Thank you, Father, for your goodness, for what you've done. Father, right now, thank you. We just say thank you. We just say thank you. We just say thank you. Let it keep coming. Somebody, you've been like, you were hit on the back of the head, the, like the back left-hand side of the head, I believe. There's some sort of like injury to that part of the head, and God's restoring something there. I felt something with like dizziness and issues because of that. Thank you, Father. We just release grace right now over that. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. All right, I want to, I want to do something in just a second. We're going to give opportunity to pray just a little bit more, but I want to give opportunity for anyone that needs to leave in, in just a moment that, you, that you'll be released, but we'll, we'll have opportunity to pray more, but if I can just get everybody's attention just real quick, if we could all just, just stand just real quick with me, that'd be great. Thank you. And I, I oh man, oh, just felt more power. <laughs> God's doing stuff more with necks as well. Um, thank you, Jesus. I, yeah, God's loosening the necks right now. We're going to give opportunity for more ministry. Oh, the Holy Spirit is just strong. <laughs> I just felt that you just get even a wave of, of presence, just even as you guys stood. Thank you, God. Yeah, if, yeah if, after even just checking your body right now, you've actually noticed there's something different. We're not going to have probably time to do a bunch of testimonies, but if you've noticed something different happen in your body, I want you to just put one hand over your head and just wave. Yeah, right here. Keep waving just for a second so we can just see. Come on. Thank you. Right here, right there, right back there. Thank you, Jesus. Right there. Come on, Jesus. Right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yeah, we just thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you for your goodness, God. Yeah, and some of you guys are going to need to check later, You're, you won't know right away, but just to keep yourself connected to faith that God is doing something. And I just want to release a, just another prayer over you guys, I just feel like there's a sealing prayer of what God's done this morning in hearts, and so, yeah, if you just, just, just put your hands out in front of you just once again, and just, just as a position of a place, of an inward place of your heart that you're receiving, because God's just pouring out right now for free. So, Father, I, we just thank you for all that you're doing this morning. God, I just thank you for Windward Church. I thank you for what they're doing in this region. I thank you for their heart to connect and partner in this region, God. And I just release a blessing right now over them in Jesus' name. God, I just thank you for all that you are doing in this region, God, and all that you're going to continue to do. I just thank you for hearts being set on fire this morning. Set, hearts being set on fire, uh, literally senses being activated yeah. in the presence to know and to discern you, God, to discern your love. Yeah, he's healing in someone's kidneys right now. You, you, you needed something with your kidneys, specifically on the right-hand side. There's a, been a problem, pain, something going on there. God's doing that. Father, thank you. We just, I just release a blessing right now over this church, God, and what you're doing. I just thank you, Father, for what you're going to continue to do. Yeah. Father, we just, we just bless, we just bless you, we bless your holy name, in the name of Jesus, amen.